Hello everyone and on to round two for art lessons today. Um, I did say I was going to start to jump into lessons for our older learners. So we're looking at lessons that are geared towards middle school, high school, and adult. Although I will say today's lesson is one that I have actually done with students as young as second grade. So it can be adapted for younger learners as well. Um, but the intricacies and detailing of this lesson is definitely something that is more geared towards our older learners. <clears throat> so it should come as no surprise to any of my current or former high schoolers um, that my first secondary lesson is gonna be focused on Zentangling. Um, so Zentangle inspired art. Uh, now the Zentangle style uh, really uh, lends itself to um, some specific artists. Uh, so Zentangle.com will take you to the website about Zentangling itself. Uh, it will take you to uh, their story, what they believe their practical uses are for it. Um, <clears throat> I've had my own style of it, pen and ink, Zentangle inspired creations over the years. Uh, it's really been my primary form of creating. So this is one that I am super excited to share with you guys. So let's backtrack. What is, so this method is super easy. Uh, it's about using repeated patterns and designs to create intricate works of art. Now, when you look at the final products, and I'm gonna show you some of my own creations. So this is my, my own binder here. Um, so these creations, I'll go ahead and show you some examples. They're kind of, kind of a little cray. So here's some creations right here. I'll show you another one of my favorites. So this one here with the two hands. Um, I'll jump forward, this one here. Um, Let's flip to some in the back, um, change it up. So these ones here, and we'll keep going. Uh, lessons like that, and like that. So these look super complex, right? You're probably looking at these like, okay, why are you making me do this? And that's typically the response I get from my high schoolers. They're typically a little intimidated when they see the final products. But let's break it down. Doing Zentangle inspired art is about taking your time using basic, simple shapes and patterns and repeating them to create your final design. Now, when I start with my kiddos, I typically start with this lesson and I actually found my worksheets at home. So I was super excited. Um, and it has all the different types and purposes and reasons for why we Zentangle. Um, if you're interested in me sending you this specifically, I am happy to do so. But if you look, uh, the first lesson I do with my kiddos is just doing basic circles. So what it looks like, it looks like this. I'll kind of get up close to it. You can see basic designs. So what I do, um, I say on here that we're going to do at least seven circles. They're going to be no smaller than a tennis ball. Um, I, I bet rule. Uh, if they want to go smaller than a tennis ball, it's perfectly fine. We're going to do a variety of shapes, and I encourage them to overlap and intersect those circles. Uh, then from there, once they drew their different circles on it, then from there I jump in and I show them different patterns. Now, if you Google Zentangle patterns or Zentangle inspired patterns, you're going to get a ton of options online. Literally pull it up on your phone. And then I show my students something like this. Um, and when I show it to them, the first thing I do is I say to them, point to one design that you know you can do. And they'll typically point to something a little easier. Then I'll say point to another, point to another. And they start to realize that while this page as a whole looks a little intimidating, none of these are terribly complex designs. Even the ones that look a little more intricate, it's just basic lines and shapes repeated over and over and over. And again, if you look these up online, you can find tons of different patterns to try. Um, one resource I'm gonna share, and I'm gonna share you the link to order these if you're really into it. It's called Yoga for the Brain. It's these little tangle cards. Um, and what they are, are actually little trading card style. And if I pull them out, you can see they have designs on the front. Um, some of them harder, some of them oop, a little bit easier. I'll get that right up close. 
Um, and then on the back, it shows you step-by-step -step how to create those cards. So if you look, there's a step-by-step -step resource right there um, to show you how to create the design on the front. So if you wanna try this, these resources are super, super helpful. Um, so that's resource number one. I'll send you the link if you wanna order those or check those out. Um, so once we've gone through, we've created our basic lines. From here, I'm gonna encourage you to use a minimum of 15 different patterns to fill the space. Now, when I look at these, let's see, there's five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's 40 patterns on this piece alone. So just picking 15, you absolutely can do that. And what you're gonna do is every time there's a page break or a shape, um, a shape change, like from here to here, change up your design. You could even break up your circles into different shapes and change your design as you go. Right in here, this is a good example. I have a shape change right here, so I changed up the design. Um, I kind of went through here, there's a design change here. With this circle, I broke it up and threw a line down the middle. I was gonna break it up into four. So there's a pattern change here. So if you look, none of these are terribly complex, but when you take your time and place them next to each other, you get these really interesting final products. Um, the other approach I wanna share with you. So approach number one is the Circle Zentangle project, um, which is the one I'm showing you here. Um, the other project idea I wanna show you is one that I've done with my middle schoolers. And with this one, we're gonna make it even simpler. And all you have to do is break up your page into 10 wavy lines, 10 wavy lines, and in each different line, you're going to play around with different patterns. Now, these were done by seventh graders. This is going way back to my student teaching days because I have not had seventh graders since 2013. I've been mostly high school, elementary, some older middle schoolers. Um, but these guys here are some final products that my seventh graders did with the Zentangling techniques. So I'm going to show you this one right here as a reference. So they went through with thin Sharpies and they filled in different patterns in each of the wavy lines. And they got creative and broke up the space as they went. They tried different patterns in different spaces. And then one of the things that I encouraged each of them to do is to add color. So you can shade with colored pencils. You can try different techniques for shading. You can try pushing harder and softer and blending your colors. Um, I love when the kids kind of made them their own and they added things like little flowers or they added the moon, which I was super psyched, or you can see the little heart right in here. Um, so you can see where they broke all those different techniques up. They even added their name right up here. So with these, you're applying Zentangle plus your own illustrations to get these final products. Um, and if you notice on this worksheet here, what I threw across the bottom, optional add-ins, add color. You can play around with colored pencils. You could play around with markers. You could turn them into kind of like an adult coloring page sort of vibe, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can add shading. You also can add, again, on that circle technique I wrote, you can add non-circular shapes. You are not required to just stick to the rules. I encourage you with this to mix it up, try a bunch of different things. But the reason why I start with these two basic prompts is it gives you a good starting point. So starting point number one, uh, creating Zentangle inspired designs in circles. And design inspiration number two is starting with wavy lines and then adding your own patterns and shapes. Now, the final products for these are gonna really allow you to work on your fine motor skills. It's gonna work on your patience, taking your time and building these pieces. And it's all out of shapes and patterns we know how to do. Spirals and zigzags and shapes and checkers. And um, you know how to do this. That's the thing. It's like with all of my students, I have to remind them, you know how to do these things. Now we're just trying them smaller. And we're trying them over and over and repeating ourselves. Um, the last things I want to share with you. Uh, a couple of resources. One, um, people were asking, okay, well, where do I get started? You are not limited by if you have sketchbooks. If you have sketchbooks, great. There is no uh, bias on size. You can go big, you can go small, you can use computer paper, you can use an index card, whatever you have available to you. Um, 
you don't need to start super, super complex. It could just be creating uh, da, 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 right there uh, four squares and then filling in inside of the square. So you really don't have to get too complex. Uh, you could go even smaller. These are known as uh, Zentangle trading cards, um, but they're like, you know, about this big. Ooh, ooh, there we go. <laughs> they're really quite tiny. Uh, the final products are super intricate, super cool. Um, and sometimes in class, I'll actually have everyone create trading cards and they can actually swap amongst each other. Um, so those are some of the different styles or sizes you can use. The other big thing I want to show you guys, The Art of Zentangle, one of my favorite books. Um, I'll also put the link to order this. I know this one's available on Amazon. But this one here has step-by-step -step how to's. Um, it has different prompts and writing and drawing starts. Um, it allows you to practice the patterns. So if that's something you're interested in, this book's an awesome resource as well. So that's what I got for you. Secondary, older learners, middle school, high school, adults. This one is definitely a great one for while we're stuck at home because it definitely takes time. These could take you all day. I know my current projects, I have a couple in the works, have been keeping me very, very busy. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think if you're stuck on where to go, what to do. Be sure to reach out, message me, and I can kind of point you in the right direction. Um, and as always, I'm taking requests. If there's something else you want to learn, if you want something for your high schooler or secondary learner to be covered, happy to do it. Um, and as always, stay safe, make good choices, and happy creating. Good luck, guys.